We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Hey Amad Aleph and Maseches Yevamis. This is Yevamis Daf Seventy Five A. Rav is in the middle of proving that the Pesukim by Oledes are in fact discussing Truma, even though some of the women being discussed are not Shaykh to Truma. Still, it's clear from the following pasuk Vaksib, but the pasuk says Bechol Kodesh Lo Siga in all Kodesh you shouldn't touch Le Rabos Hatruma. And we say that that pasuk comes to include Truma. Rashi over here says Vaksib Bechol Kodesh Lo Siga Bahi Parsha. So it's in the same parsha of Yoledes. The Yomar Marba Maseches Makos and the Master says. In Maseches Makos, bechol kodesh lo rabos ha truma. That when it says bechol kodesh, it comes to include truma. Da asura ba kol yemei toar she tevulas yom lo tumas leidasa. The entire time that that yoledis is considered a tevulas yom aruch, like we said, she's aser in truma. So you see clearly the pasuk is talking about truma at least at some points. Elakura mili mili kachashiv. Rather, you have to say that the pasuk is talking about different things at different points in time. In other words, even though sometimes it might be talking about women who are not shyich to truma, still at some points in time. Time, the Pasuk is addressing Truma. And the Gemara continues with Tlasa Kroy Bitruma Lamali. So, why do we need three Psukim pertaining to Truma in terms of at what point in time, uh, in terms of the Tahara process, that it's mutter for the Kohen to eat Truma? Rashi over here says, with Tlasa Kroy Bitruma, Bakadoshim Lo Yochel Adasher Yitar, that's one Pasuk. Vukimna Le El Mine Bitruma Hakosim Adabu, we said earlier that the Pasuk is talking about Truma there. Davar Hashove Bizarro Shalaran, because that's something that is equal in all seed of Aaron and all, in all children of Aaron. And then the other Psukim, that it's at Bias Shemesh that you're allowed to have the Truma. And then also Ad Melosi Tahara. We also had the Pasuk of Ad Melosi Tahara talking about Bayoledis. So, what do we need three Psukim by Truma for? And so the Gemara says, we need all three Psukim for the following reason. As the Gemara explains, the Imeyad Asher Yitar, if it only had the Pasuk that they can have Truma at the point in time when they are purified, so Lo Hava Yodana Bemai wouldn't know at what point in time in the purification they can have Truma. So Kosav Rachman, Uvo Hashemesh Vitar, that's why the Pasuk says Uvo Hashemesh, that it's at Bias Shemesh that the coin can have Truma. Because of Rachman, Uvo Hashemesh, now if it only had Uvo Hashemesh, Hanimili Dilav Bar Kapar, I might think that's only true by a situation of Tuma that does not require a carbon. Avol de Bar Kapar, but if it's a situation Situation of tumma that requires a carbon, emad I see kapara. I would say in those in those situations you can't have the truma until you bring the kapara until you bring the carbon. So cause of rachmana ad melos. That's why the pasuk says ad melos. That no, even in a situation where there's a carbon, you don't have to actually wait until the carbon. Because of rachmana ad melos, and if the pasuk only had ad melos, have amino afila below tvila, I would think maybe you don't even have to immerse. Cause of rachmana ad asher yitar. That's why it says ad asher yitar to say that you have to immerse as well. The gemara says hani mili hecha del. This is like we said earlier, that this Pasuk over here is all dealing with only situations where there is no Kapara. And that's why the Gemara says that if you had only the Pasuk of Uva Hashemesh, I would think, okay, we're talking about all kinds of Tumah with no Kapara. But if there'd be a Kapara involved, meaning a carbon involved, you'd have to bring the carbon. Kasav Rachmana Ad Malos, that's why it says Ad Malos, Da'afilo Yoledes, meaning even a Yoledes, a woman who gives birth, to Bas Kapara, she is somebody who who brings a carbon to Hora Baharif Shemesh still by the Harif Shemesh when the evening comes, that's going to be enough. And the Gemara continues, Now, what about according to the Tana that argues on the Tana de Veri Bishmal? This is talking about the Pasuk of Ad Asher Yitar. It says again, Until he's pure. And there's another sheet that says, No, we're talking there about a Zav Val Gimel Riyos, a Zav that saw three times emissions and has to bring a carbon. And a Mitzorah Muchlat, meaning he was declared definitely Tom and he has to bring a carbon. And according to that, Vahai Ad Asher Yitar, According to that approach, when the Pasuk says Ad Asher Yitar, it actually means Ad Demaisi Kapara. It does mean until you actually bring a Kapara. And we're talking about Kodshim according to that Tana. In other words, it just says the word Bakodoshim Lo Yochel. So until now we understood Kodoshim to mean we're talking about Shruma. But now we're saying no, when it says Kodshim, it means to say actually talking about Kodesh. It means actual Hektish. So according to that, you really do have to wait. When it comes to Hektish, you have to wait until you're fully purified, until you bring the Kapara. And so then the Gemara says, According to that Tana, Trey Kroy Bikadoshim Lomali. So why do we need two psukim? We'll see Rashi in a moment, the two psukim, but why do we need two psukim by Kodshim? Rashi over here says, V'hai ad asher yitar ad amaisi kapar v'yal karchach v'kodesh mukemes lo. It's got to be talking about kodshim. D'aksiv kro acherino v'ashemesh v'toyer the mukmes lei b'truma. We've already said by truma that all you need is b'as shemesh. You just need the sun to go down. You do not need a carbon. So clearly here where the Pasuk is saying you need a carbon according to this Tana, it's talking about kodesh. 
So then, Shrei Kroi, what are the two Psukim? Adasher Yitar, first of all, there's the Pasuk of Adasher Yitar, and then there's also Vechiper Alev Vitahera Bakadoshim Lamali. Vechiper Alev Vitahera is another Pasuk that when she brings the carbon, then she's pure and she can have. So Bakadoshim Lamali, what do you need two Psukim for Kadoshim for? Lashmin and Adamaisi Kapar, there's two Psukim now that are telling you the same thing, that, that only when you actually bring the Kapara, that's when you can eat Kadoshim. So what do you need the two Psukim for? And so the Gemara says, Srich, we do need them both. The cause of Rachmana Bioledis, if we only had the Pasuk Bioledis, that was the Pasuk of Echiper Oleha. So then Mishum de Meruba Tumasa, because there it's a long time, it's a long amount of time that she's Tame. She's counting many days. Rashi over here says, Meruba Tumasa, Shmonim Yom, Lachilas Truma Vikachim. It's 80 days. But the Gemara continues, Avo Bezov, but when it comes to a Malo, I would say not. There's not so many days of Tum over there. Because of Rachmana Bezov, and if it only was written by Zov, so the Lohutter Mechlolo, Zav is lo hutter mechlolo. We'll see Rashi in a moment. Avol yoledes say malo, but by yoledes I would say not. So it's richa. That's why we need both pesukim. Rashi over here says yoledes hutram mechlolo sharoa dam utahora labala. A yoledes is is unique because even though she sees blood, she's still considered pure. Those are the yemei tahara of a yoledes. There are a number of days where she's bleeding where we still consider her to be pure. Avol zav lo hutter mechlolo dechol kama dulo pasuk tamei by zav. As long as he has not stopped seeing these emissions, he's going to be tamei. So. Again, Again, that's why you might think when it comes to Zav, so that's Lohutr Mechlalo, so that's over there, you have to wait till you bring a carbon. Maybe your lettuce is different, so that's why we need, car- we need Psukim by both of them. And the Gemara continues, What about the Pasuk, where it says, when you immerse in water, and you'll be tummy until the evening, what's the purpose of that Pasuk? Rashi here says, That Pasuk must be talking about Shruma. Because again, that Pasuk is saying you have to wait until Arev, until the sun goes down. So Lamali, what, what do we need that for? Typically, we already have Pasukim that say that when the sun goes down, that's the purification for Truma. So why do we need this Pasuk? Again, Lamali, What's the purpose? Amar Rabbi Zaira. Rabbi Zaira says, Linigia. This is actually talking about something else. It's not talking about eating the truma. It's talking about touching it. Rashi over here says, Linigia de el, because the Pasuk earlier, Ba'achila Mishtai. That's talking about eating the truma. It talks about eating from the Kadashim. Va'aikra bekalim Mishtai. This Pasuk is talking about Kalim. The Nagia Bialmi. We're talking about the Kalim that they're touching the truma. The Ashmin and Kli. The Pasuk is telling us there's an issue of Kli touching the, the truma. Vuadin Lo'adam. Tvul Yom, Lo Yigav Etruma, the same thing is true if you have an Adam, a person who's a Tvul Yom he hasn't yet had Harif Shemesh so he's not supposed to touch Truma, that's what this Pasuk is talking about. And the Gemara continues, the Tani, as we learned in Abraisa Vitame, it says he is Tame Yochol Lakol, I might think for everything Rashi over here says, Vitame Bamayim Yuva Vitame Afla Achar Bias Hamayim Karu Tame the point over here is even after immersing the person is still really technically called Tame. So Yochol Lakol Rashi says, Ha Vitame, I might think he's Tame for everything. Tamid Lomar Vitar, it says he's pure. Mid looks at Vyitar, Mashma da Ame, Karakoi, Kodim Harav Shemesh. Vitar, it doesn't mean Vyitar like he will become pure. It means he is pure. There's a certain level of purity right now. So again, Yachol Akol, I might think he's Tame for everything. Tamid Lomar Vitar. It says there's a level of purity. E Vitar, Yachol Akol. If it says Vitar, I might think he's totally pure. Tamid Lomar Vitame, the Pasuk says he's Tame. And so the Brisa says, Haket said, how so? Kan le Meiser, Kan le Truma. In one case, we're talking about Meiser, and in one case, we're talking about Truma. And the Gemara continues, Vyepachana, so maybe I should reverse it. Maybe I should say, by the Meiser, we should be more strict. And the Gemara says, Mestabra kiechi de Chamira, Achila de Truma. No, it makes sense. Just like the eating by Truma is more strict. Me Achila de Meiser, it's more strict than the eating of Meiser. Hachanami, Chamira, Negio de Truma, me Negio de Meiser. So to the touching of Truma is more strict than the touching of Meiser. And you see over here already, we're Talking about Nigia. And the Gemara continues, Vibay same. If you want, I could say another answer. Nigia de Truma, when it comes to the touching of Truma, Rashi over here says, Vibay same, a Nigia de Truma litvul yom. The idea that a Tvul yom shouldn't be touching Truma mehacha nafka. It's learned from here, we'll see in a moment. The Tanya, as we learned in Abraisa, Bechol Kodesh lo siga azhara lo ochel, Shalo tochal be Truma calls manshi tvulas yom aruch. When it says that pasuk over there, Bechol uh, Kodesh lo siga, that's an azhara warning against eating, that when she's a tvulas yom aruch, talking about the Yoledes, she's not allowed to eat the Truma. And so now the Gemara over here says, Again, it's learned from here, Kodesh lo siga. It says, again, you shouldn't touch Kodesh. Azara lo ochel. That's a warning about eating the Truma. No, maybe it says Siga, maybe it means to touch it. Tamil Lomar, Bechol Kodesh lo siga v'yala mikdash lo tavo. Pasuk says you can't touch Kodesh, and it says you can't enter the base HaMikdash again when you're 
tamei. Makish kodesh lemikdash. So we should compare uh, the touching of kodesh. Again, it's going to be talking about eating to entering the base hamikdash. Ma mikdash davar sheyesh bo natilas neshama. Just like if you enter the base hamikdash, that's an issue of natilas neshama, meaning to say it's a chiyav kares over there, as Rashi says. Rashi says natilas neshama habola mikdash tamei bekares. If somebody enters the base hamikdash tamei, the punishment is kares. Shenemar v'nichar saki es mikdash hashem tamei. That's what it says in the pasuk over there. It says v'nik. It says v'nichrasa. So af kodesh. So to when it comes to kodesh, davar sheyesh bo natilas neshama. It's got to be that we're talking about eating it, meaning something that's chayiv the death penalty. Rashi over here says af kodesh davar sheyesh bo natilas neshama. Dahaynu achila betuma shu gabe kodesh bekares vaochel truma betuma bemisa. If a person eats truma betuma is bemisa. Dechsivu meisu bo ki yechalalu talks about misa over there. So that's how you know this pasuk over here bechol kodesh lo siga is talking about eating. So that's the idea. Af kodesh davar sheyesh bo natilas neshama uvenigia natilas neshama leka. When it comes to nigia, there is no there is no death penalty in that case. Vahai da afke bulasha nigia. And the reason why we are using a language of nigia, even though we're talking about achila, hachi kamar. What it means is nigia ke achila. Nigia is like achila means to say exactly what we're trying to prove. Nigia ke achila ha aser lechol aser liga. Whoever's aser to eat the truma is also aser to touch the truma. So you see, there is a prohibition of touching the truma. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah talked about a psua daka v'chulu that was talking about an individual who has crushed testicles. And so we say that that individual, the wife of that individual, if she didn't have relations with him, so then it's not going to be a problem. And the Gemara says, Man tana mishta meres psula de oraisa achla. Who is this tan of our Mishnah that says that she's, if she's awaiting a bia psula, but she doesn't yet have the relations with the psua daka, she's still allowed to eat the truma. Rashi over here says, Man tana mishta meres labi it says if she had no relations with him from the time that he became a Ptsua Daka, they're still allowed to eat Truma. Even though she's married to him, she's awaiting having relations with him, so to speak. But it's still going to be a, it's still not going to be a problem on a Doraisa level. And the Gemara says, Omar Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Lazar says, B'machlokes Shnuya. This really is a matter of controversy. It's a matter of Machlokes. Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Shimon. It's the opinion of Rebbe Lazar and Rebbe Shimon. Rashi over here says, B'machlokes Shnuya, B'perek Habal Yevemto. It's a little earlier. Almona L'Kohen Gadol, Grusha V'chalutza L'Kohen Hedyo. It talked about the fact this was also a prohibited relationship and Almona marrying a Kohen Gadol or a Grusha V'chalutza L'Kohen Hedyo. It said, Min Ha'erisin Lo Yochlu Betruma. The Tanakh Hama said, even though they're only betrothed, even in other words, there's no relations. They're still not allowed to eat truma. But Rebbe Lozer of Rebbe Shimon Machshirin, Rebbe Lozer and Rebbe Shimon said over there it's kosher they can eat truma because they haven't had relations. And so the same thing over here, even though it's Mishta Meris will be Absula, but since they ha- they haven't actually had the relations, so then she's still going to be mutter. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Afilu Tema Rabbi Meir. You don't have to say that our Mishnah is Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shimon. You can even say that our Mishnah follows Rabbi Meir. Shani Hoch, it's different over here, Shekavar Ochla, because she's already been eating truma. In other words, she's been eating truma before this husband became a Petsua Daka. She was eating truma, and so therefore, she doesn't lose that status. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar, why didn't he say this idea of Shekavar Ochla? Shekavar Ochla, Lo Amrinan. We don't say this argument of Kvar Ochla. That doesn't make a difference. The fact that she was able to eat truma before does not necessarily mean she can continue to eat truma. Because if you didn't say this, Yisrael Shinnisus Lakoin. Let's say you had a Bas Yisrael married to a Kohen. She's eating the truma on his account. Vameis Baal, and then her husband, the Kohen, dies. Tochal, you should say she should continue to eat. Shekvar Achla, because she's already been eating. Obviously, we don't say that. We say that once the husband dies, she loses the ability to truma. So the same thing over here. The fact that she was eating truma is irrelevant. And the Gemara continues for Rabbi Yochanan, now Rabbi Yochanan, who says that we could apply the argument of Kvar Achla. It's different in that other case of Abbas Yisrael Shinnisus Lakoin Vameis. Why? Because because over there, when the husband dies, the Kenyan is over. But here, they're still married. The Kenyan hasn't gone away. He just became a Ptsuadaka. So you can use the argument of uh, you can use the argument of Kvarachla. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. Ezo Petsua, what exactly is a Petsuadaka? And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabbon on the rabbis taught, Ezehu Petsuadaka, what is a Petsuadaka? Kol Shenifzu Beitzim Shelo, anyone who the testicles are crushed, Ve'afilu Achas Mehen, even if it's just one of them, Ve'afilu Nikvu, even if it's just as a whole, Ve'afilu Nimoku, even if it's melted, Ve'afilu Chasru, even if it's just lacking something. 
Rashi over here says niftsu kimo potsa makas chere v'sakin. So niftsu means to say like a wound. Nimoku means machmas maka. That means there was a wound. Nimoku v'huktenu me'alei, and that means they became smaller. That's what that idea means. The afilu chasru kol shuyun. If they just lost a little bit, that's going to be enough to be called a pitzua daka. And the Gemara continues. Amar Rabbi Yishmael ben Oshel, Rabbi Yochanan ben Broker, Rabbi Yishmael, the son of Rabbi Yochanan ben Broker, says Shamati mi pi chachomim bekerem biyavna. I heard from the chachomim in kerem biyavna. Rashi over here says bekerem shayu yoshvim shuros shuros kekerem hanatua shuros shuros. The reason it was called kerem biyavna is because they used to sit in rows in a way that looked similar to the way a vineyard was organized. So he says I heard from the chachomim in kerem biyavna. Kol she'ain lo el achas. Anybody who only has one uh, testicle eno elos rischama. Such a person is called a sris chama. The kosher, and such a person is still kosher to marry into the community, that's not going to be a problem. So the Gemara says, sris chama, salkadaytach, one second. You think somebody uh, with a beit achas is a sris chama? Rashi over here says, sris chama, salkadaytach, ha sris chama bidei shamayim machmas choli. A sris chama means that something happened to him, he got sick or something, and that caused him that he couldn't have children. That's not the case over here. Somebody with Beit Achas, that's not a situation of an illness that came Bidei Shamayim, so to speak. So why are you saying that someone with Beit Achas is a Sris Chama? And so the Gemara says what it means rather is, Ella, what it means is, Harehu Kisris Chama. It doesn't mean he is a Sris Chama. It means he has the same status as a Sris Chama. The Kosher is still going to be Kosher to marry into the community. Rashi over here says, Kisris Chama Vikosher, the Loasra Torah, Ella Petsua Vidoch Vikoris. Torah says the only problem is if you have, again, situations where it's crushed, some kind of a wound. But again, a situation of Beit Achas is not going to be a problem. And the Gemara now continues. V'nikev lo molid. Is it really true that if there's a hole in the testicle, the person can't give birth? The assumption over here is that all of these cases of suadaka, the person's not able to have children. And that's the basis of the prohibition. So the Gemara says, is that really true by nikev? V'ahu gavra de solik ladikla. But there was once a person who went up on a palm tree. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on daf ayin hei amud base.